Welcome to this screencast. We're going to be talking today a little bit about creating a filterable tag list. Uh, basically what you're going to do is create a list of tags which you can then use to filter through a group of resources that are created with Modex Revolution's Get Resources Snippet. Super fun, super cool. There are a ton of tutorials online about how to do this. Most of them revolve around using a single tag which you can click which then will um, will then limit the amount of resources that it shows. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, which is cool. We're going to uh, figure out a way to use multiple tags. And after we do that, it's going to even do something fun, where if they click too many tags, they'll get a fun little message, which will invite contact or give them an opportunity to reset the list. That is what we're working towards. Pretty fun, right? Pretty cool. And it's also super easy to implement. Uh, you can head over to my website, which is learnerdesign.com, to see an example of this. Uh, I've also included a page on the site, uh, which gives you step-by-step -step instructions. It also gives you the ability to just download the code that you would need, both for Revolution, and uh, it gives you an opportunity to download code to use with Modex Evolutions version, too, by substituting a ditto snippet call for Get Resources. And it also has updatable uh, code so that you can get tags and the correct syntax for uh, the Chunks Revolution as well. So, moving along, uh, basically what you need to do is create a template. You also need to make sure that you have an auto-tagging template variable set up. We also need to create a, a portfolio chunk. And we also are going to spend a little bit of time looking at this in Coda itself, which has been my, my kind of um, code editing uh, tool of late. And I'm just going to move that a little bit. OK, cool. So um, just to look at the document, uh, you'll see it's an HTML5 document. It's a fairly simple template. Uh, you can check out this code. You'll notice that it generates, this is the get resources call. It's pretty simple. I have it sorted by a TV called my date. Uh, it includes TVs without a prefix. Um, it's showing the uh, folder to pull stuff from. Here is what I've called uh, the div of portfolio cuteness. That's where that fun little message it lives. You'll notice that it it's uh, output with a style of display none, which jQuery will then uh, affect later in the script. Uh, as we scroll down, we'll see that there's a JavaScript include for the latest version of jQuery. Also, color boxes included because I use that to output the the individual portfolio items. Just to look through this script super quickly. Uh, basically what we do is we declare that when someone clicks on one of the hyperlinks inside of the portfolio list, color box will open. There is a list of classes uh, which, which, is, which is created when, when the document forms all of the portfolio tags. All of these, these items, if you were to look at the source code for them, each have a multiple number of lists associated with them. And when the page loads, the script goes through all of these different items and creates a distinct list. And uh, the way that it does that is there's a variable of classes which maps all of, all of the list items inside of this unordered list and pulls out the attribute of class. It then um, takes those classes, that, that class list, and it throws it through a function further down the page, uh, which takes that array of values, it checks the length of it, it creates an empty array, it then creates a JavaScript object called temp, and then basically what it does is it pulls the values for all of those list items and it turns them into keys inside of this JavaScript object. And what that does is it helps create, um, for each of a new key, it pushes out a value. In other words, it's getting rid of duplicates. And then we sort the array 
so that when the user looks at the list, it's alphabetized. And uh, it then takes those class list items and uh, for each one of them, splits the values based on underscores. And I'll talk about that in just a second. That has to do with how we tag stuff. And it creates a list item with the the ID for that list item is the class and this this tag list by the way is what we're seeing up here so it's generating a new uh, tag list item for each each of the classes you know that are found in the distinct list and then it keeps appending the list till it works its way through all the classes um, you'll notice that here we've hidden the class of we've hidden the list with an ID of CBOX element. Basically the way Colorbox works is it adds a class to all the items of CBOX element and this hides it. So basically the, the, the fun thing is that when someone clicks one of the tag list items, it toggles the item that's, that's checked. It either adds the class or removes it. Um, there's a variable of choice that maps all of the, uh, the tags that have been clicked with the class of active. It returns them all and joins them together, and it says that if there's been a if there's a variable um, that the entire list is to be hidden, and all of the list items inside that list are hidden, and then for all of the portfolio list items that are chosen, show immediately, and then for the entire list to fade in, there's a variable which tells you um, the items that are not chosen and it checks the length of all of them and then port the variable of port total is the length of all of of the portfolio list items and then this compares the two of them which is kind of fun so that if there's a, a list of items that are not visible equals the total list length then the portfolio cuteness fades in with a speed of 400 milliseconds. And if the portfolio length does not equal the, the variable port total and portfolio cuteness is visible, um, portfolio cuteness should be hidden. Otherwise, um, if there isn't a choice, then all of the portfolio list items should be shown uh, there's also two spans that have a class of reset, and those are the two spans that in the front page, the front end, you can hit either here or here. So any span with a class of reset, if you hit them, the tag list that's active will lose that class, and the portfolio cuteness div will be hidden, and then all of the items again will be shown. And that's kind of the whole script, which is kind of fun. And just to show you again how it works, we'll hit reset. And I happen to know that I've done a bunch of websites for folks in the green industry. I also know that I've designed websites for them, developed them. I also know that I've mobile optimized a lot of them. But I wonder if any of them are nonprofits. No, I guess not. So I could unclick that to show me my results. And then I could click one of the items and it'll show me the item. I can also um, hit the reset list, and this is where it shows all the list items again. So we're gonna go through the steps now really quickly to do this, and it probably starts best if we look at the template variable first. If you don't already have one named tags, you should create one, name it tags, caption of tags, I think it comes with the sample site package that you can download uh, via package management. You can look at the input options and you'll notice that it's set to an input type of auto tag. You'll notice that it has an allow blank of no. Output options are set to default. And then you need to just make sure that, that you allow template access to the template that um, that this is going to be output on. After we make the template variable, the next thing we're going to do is create the portfolio chunk with the name of portfolio. Inside the chunk code, we're going to paste in the code that you can get from my website. 
with a list item class equals tags. So all the class items that are created by the tagging of each resource are going to be input here, or actually will output there. There is a hyperlink which points to the actual portfolio item. When they click on it, it opens the color box. It's got a rel of color box. The jQuery code is using the rel equals color box to know which links should be open and which shouldn't. And then inside of that, there is a uh, there's an image uh, source which is points to one of the template variables, and it also has an alt like page title. Uh, and then you'll see right here it says strong visit the website name job title equals the website name so that's what's outputting right here and then of course you have to make your your you have to paste your code into your template file which I've done here and again the things that are important to go inside the template file or the get resources call and then this is the rest of the code so that is all there is to it really cool right filter filter, filter. So much fun. Thanks for coming.